Okay, hello guys. Um, today we are uh, looking at the weather. Um, sorry for this little thing up here. This is my whiteboard. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, just draw an imaginary line. Let's see. Um, and it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna take this really big hook back, and we just need to see uh, where that's gonna be. Um, so we've got the GFS and the GEFS, that's the uh, Global Ensemble Forecasting System, and then that's the Global Forecasting System. Um, obviously, mo more times uh, the GFS, GEFS will be right because it has ensemble support and stuff, so um, it's, it's really looking pretty far up there. Usually we don't see it this intense. Um, really intense up there uh, usually it stays kind of on the closer half of this to the circle here um, so it's really weird to see it up here and we can see the effects if you look at um, Western Pacific and this is really gonna be in the southwestern Pacific but let's look at some of the effects um, first off this is how it affects the United States um, as you can see let's go back um, six seven and then maybe eight oh whoops okay six seven maybe eight so six warm seven warm and then eight cold on the coast so we'll just uh, keep an eye on this February March April that's basically our what we're at right now um, and you can see the effects are really intense um, on the east coast from 6 and 7 so when you get it stronger I wouldn't be surprised if we see some um, really warm temperatures but if we get uh, into phase 8 like GFS is saying really we could be um, looking at some cold on the east also um, so just keep that in mind and then the precipitation uh, it's gonna keep things dry when we're in phase eight but that don't or five, phase six so that'll but only that will only be for a little bit um, and then we'll get into this phase and you can see all these support that moisture up there uh, Oklahoma Texas and kind of in this area so that's why we're getting a lot of moisture up there um, and that's really where it affects um, so let's go ahead and look uh, and this is one of the effects this is um, forgot the name of this one hold up this is Owen Owen and then we got um Pam so Owen is this one we go back uh, so this is Owen uh, it's hitting the coast uh, the western coast of Australia right now getting some pretty strong effects I mean we're getting shop tropical storm to even of some hurricane force winds I believe in from this one so uh, that one isn't the bad one. The Pam is the bad one. This one, I think it might even be a Category 5 by now. Um, this one's intense, at least uh, on our scale that we use here in the United States. Um, so this would be a Category 5 hurricane. Um, but this is just really strong. And I mean, really, let me open back up my whiteboard here. If you're, this is generally heading south like this. So if you're anywhere in these islands especially on the southern ones I mean watch out if you're south of this line I mean these islands are gonna get hit pretty hard and you'll be in the hardest hit area um, so just really watch out I mean this could be pretty bad for you guys down there um, let's look at how the El Nino has been developing the Enso region um, so really what I want you guys to keep an eye on is um, right in here and also while you're at it go ahead and keep an eye on uh, the PDO horseshoe right here that we call it the PDO uh, but it really just looks like a horseshoe um, that really when this is in a warmer phase this uh, supplies a lot of cold because this is basically uh, the waters influencing the temperature of the air to be warmer and also if the air is warmer it'll cool to, it'll warm up the water too so um, if one as long as that's in place, usually the east is colder. Um, but this has been strengthening the PDO, but you can just see that El Nino is getting eaten up. It is, it is gone. But we still have this PDO. Doesn't matter quite as much in the summertime, because uh, as you can see, we got this Gulf um, 
this gulf warm air and water in here as long as we keep getting that moisture supply really the pdo isn't the cold it won't be strong enough but the pdo will really block that cold air up into here so um, that'll be just something to watch and um, this is actually the 12th it's today they took this one so this is what it looks like today really this is uh neutral and so but something i want you to keep an eye on is uh right here it looks kind of cold and on here in the surface but i mean we got this major warm down there um you know like this far down uh in depth down in the water and this is heading north or not north but this is heading up um so really just need to watch that um hopefully uh if if we want any hope of having any kind of hurricane season uh, this would have to break up because, like last year, El Nino is just destroy hurricane season, except for the uh, Eastern Pacific, of course, uh, right there in the Enzo region. This is um, the Jamstech, uh, Jamstech's take on the sea surface temperatures for, J uh, what is this, June, July, August uh, 2015, so this summer, really has a Modiki, um, Modiki El Nino, and what this would do is basically pluck out any kind of um, hurricane development in here, uh, except for homegrown ones like last year. Uh, we want to, if I, I mean, it will be very boring if there's no hurricanes this year, uh, so the only thing we'll have hope of is a um, severe weather season, but really we just need to watch the hurricanes. Um, if this continues weakening, like, I mean, this is this is weakening pretty bad. But, like I said, uh, that was, you know, it just, uh, the, the right below it is really warm. But this is heading north. If this gets, you know, um, you know, starts getting a little bit dissipated, uh, then we'll have hope. Um, here's the Jamstech, um, t two year forecast, I believe, for El Nino. Um, so. It really wants to keep an El Nino, moderate El Nino, for uh, this winter. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see, but then has it back into a neutral. And so something I wanted to show you guys is usually once you get those El Ninos even weak, it'll reverse and go straight into a La Nina. Um, so that's looking the most likely if we can get this uh, warm patch that, we, that I was showing you guys back there to dissipate, then that would give us a better hope at... Um, at, you know, a La Nina, um, but I really want to change, you know, something more interesting, and as you can see, it's usually of the magnitude of the one, you know, that is the opposite, so when you get a strong El Nino, you go into a strong La Nina, that's really what it's been looking like, um, and so, really, um, and you see these weak ones, they pop back down. Sometimes in La Nina, they'll have like a little bit of a rebound or something. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, and it just, uh, so that's like the winter, it goes back and then, but usually you don't see that with an El Nino. Usually it's just a one year thing or comes back. That's what it did in the nineties and eighties. But a lot of these are just pikes straight up. Um, and then, so, I mean, maybe we could have like, I don't know, something like this. And then go, uh, maybe that relates to the 70s, late 70s, early 80s. So it, we'll just have to see. Um, here's the AO, more short term thing. Um, you really see that dip, but I mean, it's going to go positive. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, this March is going to be cold, late March. Oh, we're going to get more snowstorms. Not exactly. Um, we really had a lot of that snowpack melt. Uh, I think it's only 16% of the U.S. is covered in snow now, and it was about 30 like a week ago, literally. So, really looking uh, less likely that we see um, a lot more snow. But if we had that snowpack, it would make it easier. But really, that dip and then it goes positive. So, uh, 16th till the end, and then I think April we'll get a nice warm up right in the beginning. So that'll be enjoyable. Um, and then here's the NAO, and this is what l tells me that the cold might not be as bad as people are saying. If the, if the NAO went a little bit further negative, I'd be a little bit worried. Um, just, I, I'd say we're going to be right in a neutral NAO, 
that's a little more optimistic. Like it can go either way. With the negative AO, that'll make it like a slight uh, trough maybe in the east, and then with the PNA positive, but that's going negative. So really, the mystery is right. Um, right in this zone, is it gonna go up or is it gonna go down? If it goes down, expect warm weather. You want the PNA to be negative for warm weather. So let's uh, move on to my forecast for the rest of March. We're looking like a few storms enough to put us above average precipitation for the rest of March. Two or three storms like this. We've already had one. We're having one this Saturday, and then it looks like there'll be an even another one the models are trying to show. So um, that'll probably put these areas in above average precipitation. Um, especially in this area, uh, and then that just heads east, so DC, that area, also getting in on a lot of that moisture. Here's my forecast for the one this Saturday. Um, for my local area, not looking like too much rain, just a quarter to half an inch of precipitation, but once you get into the, uh, you know, Mississippi, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, right in there, um, I mean, you could be expecting two to four inches, all this yellow air, this is a really big area of one inch, and like I said, this is Gulf moisture. You can literally see where this is coming from. It's just coming right out of here, and uh, it's going to head east, but it's going to break up, and uh, we'll be south of this. Uh, it'll bring a warm front with it, brief warm-up, maybe hitting some 70s uh, in my local area this Saturday, so that'll be nice. And then right in here, uh, that's where we might break four inches just because that's right where that moisture is heading in. Um, so just pinpoint your area, whatever. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. This has been an update. Um, I'll make more videos on everything like spring. Hopefully we can get some severe weather action uh, once that warm-up happens in early April. Um, maybe a few thunderstorms in our area that will make things interesting. Uh, let's just hope for that. Uh, see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.